Hello friends, today I want to talk to you about the power of granular data, what it is and how we can unlock it for IFC with Autodesk data exchanges in order to create smart and durable references in tools like Revit or Power BI. If you are new to this channel, hi, I'm Leila, a recovering architect and technology enthusiast working at Autodesk. So why is granular data so exciting? The amount of data in AC projects is exploding, and so are the file sizes. How often have you received a massive IFC or Revit file, despite needing just some specific data, like a door schedule? While we can view these bulky files easily on online platforms like the Autodesk Construction Cloud, working with them can be difficult, no matter if you are opening a Revit file or referencing an IFC in order to be able to create your door schedule. With data exchanges, these challenges belong to the past. You can convert a variety of files into granular data, going away from the static and bulky files to dynamic data sets accessible through the ACC. If you are interested in a more in-depth explanation of data exchanges and the Autodesk strategy behind this, please check out this video, which is highlighted here above and also mentioned in the video description below. Now let's focus on data exchange for IFC. This is a brand new public beta that is not available by default on Autodesk Docs yet, but you can easily join the beta program through our feedback community and you will find the exact steps and all the links you need in the video description and also on my blog. Once joined, you will see this new tab after uploading a new IFC file, which will let you filter down the IFC file based on the classes, types, element names, or also other properties available in the IFC. This is very powerful because you can easily get rid of all the unnecessary data and make sure that your data exchange contains only the elements you really need. Now, to be transparent, of course, you could also select all the IFC classes and create a data exchange based on the entire IFC file. But I just want to highlight that data exchanges are ideally used for subsets of data and work best in these cases. Once the data exchange has been created, you can review it in the ACC viewer as any other file, and it will even be automatically updated whenever the original IFC is updated. Note that a data exchange always has zero byte file size and you cannot download it because, as mentioned, it is granular data and not a file. However, you can access it through the API and also through our connectors like the ones for Revit or the Power BI. And this is what I want to show you now. In order to load the data exchanges in Revit, you will need to install the data exchange connector for Revit, which is currently in beta and can be found through the Autodesk App Store. Once installed, you will find it in the Collaborate tab and it will allow you to create but also load data exchanges from ACC. Now, why should you load the data exchange instead of the IFC itself? Well, there are a couple of reasons I can think of. First of all, the data exchange ideally represents a subset of the IFC, including only the data you need, so it tends to be more lightweight. Another reason is the way the reference is created. The elements are directly loaded into Revit, which means they can be used in all views, schedules, sheets, they can be tagged, but at the same time, it can be easily updated with a new version of the data exchange available without breaking anything. And last but not least, when you save your Revit file with the loaded data exchange on Autodesk Docs, you will also see the reference in ACC Viewer in all views and sheets, which is not the case with IFC, as you might know. What you cannot do with data exchange today is edit this data in any way. This might change in the future, but today data exchange is a durable reference, which can be easily updated. Another exciting workflow is dashboarding data in Power BI, which can be used for visualization, data analysis, and quality checks. Again, you will need to install the data exchange connector from the Autodesk App Store in order to have access to this data source. Please note that this connector is not in beta anymore, so it is uh, officially available and can be used in production as well. After loading the data exchange, you can add the custom visual that has been installed together with the viewer and start populating your dashboard. The viewer visual comes with uh, instructions, but if you are like me, you probably don't read instructions, so let's populate the visual together. 
First of all, open your data pane and search for viewer and drag this element to the first field. You will see the viewer populate instantly. However, you should also populate the external element ID in order to establish the connection with other visuals in Power BI. To achieve this, just search for the external element ID and drag it to both fields. Now we can continue adding other visuals, for example, to evaluate how many elements of a specific category or type we have in the model. Of course, you can also use filters in these visuals in order, for example, to create a list of all wall types uh, available in this model. Power BI also allows loading additional data sources like Excel files or even other data exchanges and combining them in the same dashboard. Let's load another data exchange together and see how we can create a federated view, which is a relatively new function that has been added in the most recent version of the Power BI connector. For this, we will first need to establish a relationship between the data tables. No worries, this is far less scary than it sounds. Just switch to the Relationships tab here on the left, scroll to the Federated Views entry in both of the data tables and drag and drop them onto each other. You can proceed with the default settings now and your data tables are now connected. The only thing you need to do now is to add the viewer element as well the external element IDs from the new data exchange to your viewer visual. I hope you like this short overview. If you are familiar with Power BI, you probably know that the possibilities are endless and I would really like to explore some more advanced workflows and dashboards uh, with you in the next videos. If you would like this as well, please feel free to leave me a comment and also share your ideas about what exactly you would like to dashboard. Who knows, maybe your idea will be featured in the next video. Thanks for watching and uh, may the data be with you.